So one of the biggest things I did this year was of course my Harrison Lewis series and when I was over there I actually sat down at the end of every day and spoke to my camera about how I was feeling and you may think that that's a bit of a strange thing to do, it's not something that I normally do but through doing that I my intention was to create a bonus video which I've been debating whether or not to show on this channel but I put a uh, a question up on my Instagram stories recently asking whether you guys would be interested in seeing that and the majority of you said you would. So I decided to go ahead with uploading this video and the reason that I decided to do it is because, you know, part of this channel is making you all aware of Scotland and how beautiful this country is. You know, and open your eyes to the different areas and the different cultures that we have within here in Scotland and the Outer Hebrides life is completely different to the life that I have here in the northeast of Scotland and that's something that fascinates me about this country. I've said it before before. Scotland is a really small country in comparison to most but within that small country we have so many different cultures, dialects and different ways of living and it is fascinating. You know somebody who lives even 50 miles down the road from you can be living a completely contrasting life to the one that you're living and that is why Scotland is so fascinating. And what really made me decide to upload this video was about a month ago I saw the crime, Scottish crime writer Ian Rankin being interviewed on TV and he said if you really want to get a feel of what somewhere is like, especially a town or a city, read crime fiction because even though it's fictional the authors have really gone into depth about that place and a lot of what they describe in these novels in terms of the place and the characteristics and the people that live there, it's very true to life. And just after seeing his interview on TV I discovered a trilogy of crime stories based on the Outer Hebrides which is this trilogy here and I've spent the last month reading these books and I've really been transported back to the Outer Hebrides and a lot of what I explained in these end of day videos is explained in these books. So if you've been to the Outer Hebrides or you're interested in learning more about it and the culture I'd highly recommend reading these and I will put a link in the description if that interests you. So this video is something different but it's explaining to you how I felt when I was over there because Half of the Outer Hebrides is viewed as this beautiful, tranquil place full of history, nature, culture, well worth visiting and it is 100% worth visiting, it's such a beautiful part of the country. But for people who live there day in day out and have to deal with its harsh weather and harsh environment, it can be very challenging, it can be very isolating and it can be very depressing and I was very fortunate when I was over there to be slightly connected with the community more than an average tourist just because I, I know one or two people over there and it really opened my eyes to island life and maybe a part of island life which many people don't consider. So this video as I say is my thoughts and feelings of how I felt when I was over there and I hope it opened your eyes to how Hebridean life is so different and so in many ways harsher than mainland Scotland life and in this video will hopefully show you a side of Scotland that maybe you haven't really thought about before. So welcome back to the Isle of Lewis. It is, um, well, it's the evening of, of day one here and I decided what would be a good way, I suppose, to kind of finish this series is to kind of talk through how I feel about living here this week on Lewis because, like I say, it's only day one and I find myself getting very emotional tonight because Life here is so much different to what it is like back on mainland Scotland and I almost find that, that being here is the first time in ages that I felt almost at complete peace with life and it's crazy because tonight being in this quite remote part of, of Lewis, I am in a, a part called Ness which is really near the butt of Lewis which is at the top of the island and despite there being a car passing me right now, it is so quiet here. Like, literally, you cannot hear a thing. And it kind of makes me realise, like, how tuned in and how, like, crazy life is back on mainland Scotland. Like, not compared to, obviously, cities and all that around the world, but life here is, it's almost old-fashioned. It's like going back in time to to a time which many people in Scotland, you know, lived like this naturally th throughout, throughout the country. And coming here to the Outer Hebrides, I found it's just been so in many ways spiritually awakening. Like I said, it's only day one here, but I already feel calmer, I feel less stressed, I feel more at ease with myself and with life than I have felt for a long time. 
And the reason I kind of thought it would be good to sit down and talk about these kind of feelings and how this island is making me feel is because I feel like nowadays we are so connected with the world. We're constantly on our phones, we're constantly connecting with other people, we're constantly worrying what other people think of us. And when you come to an island like this, which is as remote and as, you know, quiet as, as Lewis is, you kind of realise that those quiet places, those those harmonious places where life is slow and where not much happens and where you can really be at one with nature and with the island and the country you live in, these places still exist. They're just so, so hard to find nowadays. And like I say, tonight I found myself getting incredibly emotional because this afternoon it was, there was quite a lot of tourists around, which you kind of expect, but as the day has gone on, this evening I went to this B&B for tea which we'd booked, it was like a, a family home and we got cooked this beautiful homemade meal and while we were eating the meal this, this man was playing, the man that, that kind of hosted it all was, was playing a piano and it was just such a nice feeling. How often nowadays do you go to kind of a small restaurant kind of area with only one other you know, one other group of people there and somebody playing you piano, welcoming you into their home, giving you tea and coffee. Um, it was the community feel here and the heritage here and how kind everybody is to each other. You just don't get that in many places nowadays. And I just thought it'd be a good idea at the end of every day throughout this trip to sit down and kind of talk to you all about how I'm feeling about being here because it is so different to mainland Scotland. And this is kind of places like coming to the Western Isles, you can really detach yourself from, from everything that's going on in your life, the stresses, the anxieties, the things that, that you worry about. And you, like I say, you can completely disconnect and life here is just so simple. Coming here today, I just feel really, as I think I've already said, at ease with myself and at ease with my life. And I'm starting to wonder whether the idea of living in a really rural part of Scotland like this would suit me well. I'm not sure how I would cope in terms of, of um, the isolation and everything else, but the community feel here and the fact that everybody knows everybody, it is such a humbling thing to, to experience and to be a part of. Because tonight I'm very lucky because I'm staying with, with a friend of, of a friend. So you know, the friend that we're staying with knows everybody in the local community and they all introduce themselves to you and you kind of feel like you're a part of it. And living here, it's like, it's probably one of the only places left in the country where you are, you know, you know who your neighbours are and you're friendly with your neighbours and you just don't get that in the world nowadays and that community feel, that connection, that human interaction, that human relationships that we miss so much in our towns and cities, you still have it here. And I just think that is magical truly truly magical like I said I've just found things so emotional tonight just being here in this 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 landscape where like wildlife and nature are, are allowed to be at one and to be at home here and where life is just so simple so it's just wonderful truly truly wonderful so it's day two here on Lewis and just to get back to my kind of idea of how I feel about island life. Today has been very different to yesterday. I've really really enjoyed today but like the weather and that has been completely different. As you will have seen in my kind of historical exploring video, it's been kind of gale force winds and torrential rain on and off all day which you kind of expect for this part of the country. They get this weather a lot. And because it's just been today that the weather's been like that, I've found it so exhilarating. We've had such a good time. We've been soaked to the skin. We've been running around trying to, to kind of miss all the storms. We've been driving in this torrential rain. It's, it's been great fun. But I can imagine that living here in such a remote community with weather conditions like this on a regular basis must be quite challenging. You know, although having crazy stormy kind of weather for a day or two, I personally find it quite exciting. But imagine living in this environment all the time like the whole year round and especially in the winter months i can't imagine how kind of bleak and and cold and windy and wet this area this, this part of scotland gets in the winter it must be pretty horrendous but you know like i say i've enjoyed today i just hope that the weather over the next few days improves it is meant to but it's just 
you know, because today is the weather's been so different to yesterday and the experiences I've had have been so different too, it's been it's been in many ways eye opening. This trip to me like I still feel like I felt yesterday. I still feel that sense of peace and tranquility here and there's just no stress at all and I just love that. But like I say, the weather and the challenging kind of side of things here m must be quite difficult. And today we've obviously been to all these historical kind of monuments and stuff and it just kind of shows you how harsh and how challenging life living on this island has been throughout the centuries. And you know, it's, it's very eye-opening to see some of the kind of buildings and that that people used to live in and even some of the conditions that people live in nowadays. And, you know, obviously there's some lovely houses over here and it's 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 just like the mainland from that respect. But you know, there's still a lot of people that live in quite old-fashioned houses and in quite old-fashioned ways. But it's a breath of fresh air to come to a place where people still live like that. And also today this, this man stopped us. He was probably, he was definitely retired. He was a, an older gentleman from here and he was chatting to us all about about Lewis and you know about where we'd come from and just all this general chat and I just thought it was so nice that this kind of elderly man who's I don't, didn't know much about him I don't know whether he lives on his own or what but you know he kind of goes out his way to drive around and kind of stop and speak to tourists about you know where they've come from and get to know them and it's I think it's probably part of his, his daily routine which I just think is lovely you know that's what I've kind of noticed here is it, pretty much everybody is so friendly everybody's willing to help you everybody kind of gets on and it's just it's lovely so i'm excited to see what what day three has in store for us and i look forward to talking to you all again then so i'm wondering whether people who live on these islands ever get bored of the scenery like yesterday we were driving through the mountainous regions of harris they were so beautiful like really really beautiful and you know all the beaches and that here are just some of the most amazing beaches in the world and i i always wonder whether people you know it must become a novelty to those who live on this island who, are, who have been on this island for so long they've got so much beauty on their doorstep and it must just i don't know but it must just be Amazing to live here, but you, I'm, I'm wondering whether they manage to appreciate it as much as you do as, as a tourist. And again today the weather is lashing down. I also think, you know, if you live here, you must have a massive collection of waterproof clothing because I don't think, I mean they do obviously get good weather here as we do on the mainland, but I don't think the weather is ever far away from rain <laughs> and I was stupid enough only to bring one waterproof jacket with me this trip which is why I'm now wearing this one and it is soaking. This is the third time now that I've got soaked to the skin here but do you know what it's all part of the fun and it is exhilarating. So it's now the final full day here in the Outer Hebrides and I can't help but admit that I'm starting to feel very isolated. I have loved this week here, I really really have and I think it's so great sometimes to get away and to be in a community where you are isolated and where there's not that many other people around, you know it can be quite exhilarating and we all need that from time to time, you know that getting away, going somewhere quiet, getting that peace, you know that peace and quiet that we don't really get in modern life. But I think what I've, I'm really starting to kind of realise is like I suppose the novelty of being somewhere that's this quiet and rural, it does wear off I think quite quickly. Unless you grow up and you're used to this kind of life, it's, it is quite difficult to adjust to. I mean, obviously I'm just here this week on holiday but I couldn't imagine how isolated and lonely you would feel here unless you had quite a good community of people around you that you already know, whether that would be friends or family. You know, I do love coming over here. I think it's a beautiful part of the country. It's well worth exploring. If you love nature, you love the outdoors, it, it's such a, a great place to be. But I could not imagine and cannot imagine what it must be like to live here full time. You know, I'm really starting to miss my friends. I'm starting to miss company. And although I have seen people while I've been here and, you know, been around a couple of different people, just that variety and that company and that, you know, hustle and bustle of normal everyday life. You know, I'm just starting to miss it. Coming over here for a few days, I think, is fantastic. And you know, if I was staying here for more than a week, then I might 
really get into it again but you know it's funny because today is really nice it's nice and sunny outside really sunny actually quite windy but nice and sunny but despite that and despite this beautiful wilderness I still kind of wish that I was in some ways back on the mainland around my friends and the people that I I really enjoy spending time with and it must be tough for people who, who move over here for work and and whatever because you know it's not somewhere that people can just pop over and see you and visit you it is like a, it's a completely different way of life it's a nice way of life and I think I could do it for a short period of time but you know I, I really I must say it the people who live here all their life or who live here for many years I've really got to take my hat off to them because although I would love the solitude and the, and the, the quietness that you've got here and all the, the wildlife and the nature and the peace and quiet I think the isolation and the loneliness and the lack of varied company would get to me very quickly but island life is, is a fascinating life to live a fascinating place to come and, and learn about it, both the modern life and the, the historical life and all the, the ways that people used to live here many, many years ago.